anguish, hesitation, and prayer, the moment for the surgery had arrived. In a 12-hour operation, the doctors removed the diseased half of Casey's brain. Where there were billions of brain cells, there was now only empty space, the white area in this brain scan. Casey survived. Her seizures were gone. But it would be weeks before anyone found out just what price she had paid. When we return, was it worth it? And then you sit here and you look at this and it's like, it's not like you have the choice of going back. You've seen Casey and her family struggle with her seizure disorder. What will she be like after surgery? And will Casey's experience help us learn more about the mysteries of the brain? In just the last few years, we've learned that music can help build the brain power of young children. We've also learned that the brains of babies who don't receive affection, like these Romanian orphans, may never fully develop. On the other hand, new research shows that the young brain has a remarkable ability to rewire itself. But can Casey's? She's already 13. Her brain was nearly mature when they performed the surgery. Will the half that's left be able to help her speak, walk, and live a normal life? Her doctors don't know. When you tell a parent what is going to happen after the operation, do they ever fully comprehend how difficult it's going to be? Never. They never understand. More of Casey's story when Dateline continues after this message from your local station. In America, we are Southern Company. Energy to serve your world. Returning to our story, in a remarkable operation, 13-year-old Casey Caves, seen here before the surgery, has had half her brain removed to control a rare form of epilepsy. As you might expect, it's a very different Casey we meet now as she starts off on the road to recovery. Once again, here's Robert Brazil. It is 10 days since surgeons removed the left half of Casey Cave's brain. Her head is temporarily swollen. The change in her appearance is painful to see. She is in rehabilitation in Baltimore. Good job. You feel me? You feel it more? Her right hand is now paralyzed. Her right leg is weak, almost useless. And there's something else. Before the surgery, Casey had been a bubbly and optimistic teenager. All right, you go ahead first. Now she seems disinterested. I don't care. You don't care? Even angry. Listen to my hand over here. Okay. Yes, you can. You can do okay. And though she could say simple phrases, adding to her agony is a profound loss of language. Can you imagine the frustration of being unable to express yourself? She knows what's going on. She understands and she can hear. But she can't initially even reliably say yes and no. As a parent, no one wants to uh, admit their child has that deficit when they were a very verbal child. I wasn't really prepared for the frustration. The terrifying epilepsy is gone. In its place, a swirl of confusion. We need to look in here for a small square. The right side of Casey's brain is all she had left. But remember, the doctors had told Casey's parents that the right side would get stronger, rewiring itself to take over the functions of the left half. But 10 days after the surgery, there's no sign it's happening. You drink out of it? Regina, who spends each day at Casey's side, struggles to maintain her optimism, but fights to stay strong for her daughter. Are you going to go to the beach? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Are you going to bed? Yes. yes. It's a week before Christmas, just a month since the surgery. Casey and her family are back home in Tulsa. Let's do bridges first. Okay. She continues with her grueling day-by-day -day therapy. Gone are the cane and wheelchair she needed just three weeks ago. Her right side is remarkably stronger. Repeated practicing with the leg helps Casey's brain to find new pathways to control it. Okay, forward and back. And while Casey's upbeat mood has returned, she is still fighting a heartbreaking battle to learn to speak again. What color is it? Uh oh. The sky is 
Remember I had jeans on the other day? What color are my jeans? How can the right half of Casey's brain possibly take over and allow her to speak again? New research is showing that in all our brains, nothing is concentrated in one place. Memories, thoughts, and words are scattered throughout. The hope is that Casey's remaining brain will form new connections, connections that will allow her first to find words and then to speak in sentences. It's like a field of hay. It's grown up, there are no pathways. The words are hidden as treasures here, there, and everywhere. They've got to search around to find the right word. He has a hard shell on his back. Neck goes in when he gets scared. <laughs> when they find the right word, they've bent the grass a little bit. When they find that word enough times, they've beaten the path to that word, and it comes back. What comes back? Oh, no. Oh, no. Not again. Remember the jeans? Casey, go put on your... Okay. Jeans. Jeans. Not green jeans. Blue jeans. If you took out the left side of my brain, I wouldn't speak again, would I? Probably not. And the reason is that your right side of your brain, the ability to find language, has been buried too long. If we did that for you at 10, I can assure you that you will talk again. But Casey is not 10. She's 14 now. The question remains, is she too old to reclaim her speech? Her father, Wes, is still wondering if they did the right thing. You sit here and you look at this and it's like, it's not like you have the choice of going back. It's April, five months since the surgery. Casey's body has become markedly stronger. Her right hand remains weak, but with just one arm, she swims laps easily. With a brace on her ankle, she can walk even better than she could before the surgery. Dead. And most important, the disability her parents feared most is getting better. Casey is beginning to speak again. What's our season? Sprint. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What color do I have on? Blue. And you? And red, that's right. New connections in Casey's brain are emerging, allowing her to express her thoughts. Regina and Wes, for the first time in four years, are beginning to see a future for Casey. Their anguish about their decision, first to delay and then to have the surgery, has eased. Now, as they watch Casey get stronger and stronger, they stand in awe of her courage. <laughs> I've had her in therapy, thinking that somehow this kid's got a break. I have. I've gotten angry. I've cried. I've shed tears. And so I take her, and the therapists come out and say, Regina, this is the most well-adjusted child. You know, then they kind of hint, like, maybe you'd like to be in therapy. But actually, she does great.